Good morning. I'm Lucy Ruhr. Myself and my team from Wilberforce College are going to present to you on the question, is it possible to use assessments to identify common skills gaps of GCSE research students and can these gaps be filled through retrieval techniques? As we came to this research question, we started with the idea of mastery and looking at different mastery approaches for raising attainment. We wanted to focus on gap filling primarily, so we needed to look first at how to identify those gaps. Our initial aim was to attempt to identify whether there were differences in the skills gaps between the different settings in our action research group. However, we had to adapt this following cycle one. We started our research by focusing on mastery methods and moved on to methods of identifying skills gaps and the rule of threshold concepts. We found that as far back as 2017, it was suggested that further education teaching should focus on closing students' learning gaps rather than uncovering the whole course content. Also, Davies suggests that teachers must start the year with comprehensive diagnostic assessment. We also researched different methods of identifying misconceptions and we looked at error analysis. This involves categorising errors into two groups, slips and bugs with slips being a random error that is not indicative of a gap in knowledge or misunderstanding, and bugs being a persistent misconception that will consistently interfere with students' abilities. However, Craig Barton suggested in 2018 that a good diagnostic question can help you identify and understand both mistakes and misconceptions. Star suggests diverting instructional time daily to filling gaps exposing students to mathematics problems that include tasks from prior years and units. He recommends that this can be done through do now or warm up exercises, additions to homework assignments or even test problems. Once we had completed our initial research and reading, we began the project in earnest. We created an initial assessment using past paper questions from the GCSE 2017 papers. We used all of the number related questions for this as we wanted to focus on these as potential threshold concepts. This wasn't as useful as we imagined and as we'll discuss on a later slide. Um, so a second attempt was needed at analysing skills gaps. We used ED for this to allow us to identify where the misconceptions were arising and whether they were indeed true skills gaps or whether they were just slips. After we had a notional idea of what the skills gaps were, we created a retrieval sheet for these eight skills for students to complete over a series of lessons. We made 16 versions for students to complete every lesson and a tracker to go alongside these to record student improvements. The questions were kept minimally different to ensure that we were keeping the level of difficulty around the same. Those questions where students got them incorrect, we then got them to practice additional questions within the lessons. We used Maths Watch for some students. We also used visual methods for the questions where that was applicable, such as the ratio question. We completed a follow-up ED at the midway point and at the end point to look for any progression from these students. We initially used all GCSE research students um, attached to Action Research Group teachers at all of the involved colleges. We inputted the results onto a skills analysis spreadsheet on Excel from the initial assessment where we had a score for each question per student, given a red, amber and green output. The results were stored in ED for the second assessment attempt, and Microsoft Forms were was used to collect results from student trackers electronically. We also used Microsoft Forms to gauge student responses and for a staff voice using open input, and all students completed a final mock of the year to compare overall grade change from the December mock to the end of the year. We identified topic areas below 45% as a jumping off point, then looked at whether these were actual skills gaps or if there were any other issues at play. For example, a number of the questions were eliminated as student responses indicated issues with literacy and comprehension rather than being indicative of a genuine skills gap. 
We then stripped back a list of topics we thought were most likely to be gaps and made an ED assessment from these. Topics included rounding and accuracy, prime numbers and prime factors and calculations with decimals amongst others. During the second round of research, the simplified nature of the ED questions allowed us to identify not just what they got wrong, but why, whether there was a genuine misconception or whether it was just a slip. Five questions of each topic were used to try and eliminate the flukes. This did make the um, analysis more difficult as students were inconsistent in their responses. The vast majority of the data we gained during the process was quantitative. We used statistical analysis, for example averages and standard deviation among others, to analyse the results from the student retrieval sheets. We did the same to analyse the mid-session and post-intervention ED to look for any improvement in students' results. At the same time, we eyed the data looking at trends over time which led us to some intriguing conclusions. Finally, we compared the final mock results with those from the December mock. We did receive some qualitative data from the questioning of students and staff, which we analysed using coding. So in conclusion then, it was very difficult to use exam questions for the purpose of analysing the skills gaps. Too many of them had to be discounted for various reasons, so we had to almost entirely go back to the drawing board on this. ED was a little better, but our mistake was giving too many of each type of question in the first instance. The students just became disengaged and the scores noticeably slumped towards the end. We used ED for identifying where students had genuine misunderstandings and gaps in knowledge. For example, we came to the conclusion that students struggled with prime factor trees as they had an issue with both factors and prime numbers. We did find there was too much variance between the students um, and it became impossible to identify consistent gaps across the cohort, presumably due to the varied nature of the schools they came from, although strangely this was also the case in the two um, school six forms that we worked with. Even on an individual basis, they didn't necessarily get the same questions consistently incorrect on the first ED that we used. When focusing on the results from the retrieval sheet trackers, we did find that initially the retrieval sheets did show some success, with the results generally improving rapidly over the first couple of lessons. Although overall improvement in the average score and the average score per student, we did find that further broken down analysis question by question seemed to reveal that this wasn't necessarily consistent improvement by topic. For example, some students got one question correct one lesson and then they got the exact same topic incorrect the next lesson, although their score was improving as they were getting different questions correct. We did notice that there was definite variance across the groups in terms of both outcome and perception. The student's opinion of impact varied often by class group rather than by results, high or low, or by any other classification. Some students found it really useful and thought that it had had a big impact on their learning, how others really disliked it and didn't think it had given them any improvement at all. While we did see improvement on the retrieval sheet trackers and subsequently on the ED assessments, the impact on overall attainment was limited. We didn't have enough of an impact to say that it could be definitely put down to this intervention from the overall mock results. One of our key takeaways from this was that improvement seemed to slow after the midway point. Some students even completely plattered. Perhaps this showed disengagement. We have questioned whether the eight week intervention was too long. And one of our considerations for next time was breaking it down into four topics per sheet but to do each of the topics for four weeks rather than the full eight weeks. Hello, we have been Wilberforce College. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you.